and just give you a bit of an overview of the landscape for what's going on for IRs in Canada. So there's a lot of universities and colleges in Canada. Um, these, these are not repository instances, these are just you know, universities and colleges, but most, most universities and many, many colleges have institutional repositories. Um, a substantial um, uh, proportion of these are um, maybe having something like 10,000 documents or less, and some of them are really, really large. There's a repository that's got 500,000 items in it um, on the West Coast. Uh, and we also have some repositories that are run by government agencies, such as the Library and Archives of Canada and the National Research Council. So I'd like to share with you just some realities of what it is to do repositories in Canada. Um, there's lots more challenges than this, um, but we do have to mindfully work to overcome these. So, we're, so Canada's huge. Um, it actually is cheaper to fly to Europe from where I live than it is to fly to the east coast of Canada. Um, so this vast geography really makes it hard for us to all come together and meet. It's very, very rare that we do that. Um, the last time and we did that was in 2016. So we work regionally. We work with our regional networks um, and we have many, many teleconferences and, and unfortunately have to fill out a lot of doodle polls. Um, we don't have a funding situation in Canada that's, um, you know, providing us with a really like a sustainable um, foundation. We have to share the resources of our institutions to achieve the goals that we set out to, um, to achieve together. And I think this is very common, um, and I also personally think this has been fairly damaging to the repository movement over you know, the, the, all of the span of time, is that our communities of practice, the people who tend to talk to one another, tend to be segmented by the choice of software that they're using, rather than like the institutional repository problems that they're trying to solve. And so um, we are now working in Canada to overcome that reality um, in a few important ways I'll describe. But just briefly to show you the software that's used, um, like we, there's quite a number that are used. So DSpace is the most commonly used software, but I wouldn't say it's like an 80% pr proportion. It's probably more like 60%. Um, and we've got a lot of Islandora sites. Islandora came from Canada. It's, uh, it's widely adopted. Um, so we have a very diverse implementation environment for new repository functionality that we're going to have to contend with, and I heard this from other speakers as well. Um, as far as our content, like many other countries, very diverse. Um, we are discussing and evaluating some new ideas around content theme for repositories and what that actually means, um, kind of in an existential state about what our purpose is. Um, we are actually experiencing a lot of success in collecting gray literature, um, community-based research, uh, research institute, um, papers that are nothing to do with commercial publishing. Um, so I think that's a very interesting uh, new development in, in our discourse, at least in Canada. Um, some institutions or consortia are running their own data repositories. Um, data emerging is a major theme for us. Um, many using the Dataverse application um, led by Harvard. Um, there is an association of these institutions called Dataverse North who are sharing best practices for really for data repository services, um, to try to work more closely together from the outset, which I think is a lesson learned from early IR days. You know, let's work together and not engage in um, institutional competition if we can possibly help it in this domain, because the problems are hard enough. Uh, you, many of you uh, may have heard about this already. Um, Portage is a key initiative in Canada. Um, this research data management focused organization seeks to develop a national research data culture, foster RDM communities of practice and researchers, 
and provide infrastructure for data management. And it's a national collaboration of universities and very prominent um, you know, data experts. Uh, this uh, slide is displaying the Federated Research Data Repository um, connected to Portage, currently in limited production, and it's a national repository for data. And very importantly, um, FRDR is able to handle very large data sets. Um, I'd like to turn now to the people who are working in this space and our efforts together. So in 2016, there um, was a meeting with, which was uh, quite important, I think, that was of the directors of the Carl Library. So, you know, most of the major research libraries in Canada, if not nearly all of them, uh, as well as a, a pre-meeting um, institutional repository managers event that set out to approach the repository space um, coll collaboratively and strategically. And it was the first time that I experienced anyway that the IR management and Carl directors community met together to discuss our largest challenges and consider the role of repositories in the larger scholarly communications ecosystem and really just speak very frankly about the lay of the land um, and what we're really up against and what we wanted to achieve. At the same time, Carl released this excellent document outlining activities to stimulate change in scholarly communications in Canada. Um, it's really helpful in collaboration to have a white paper to orient yourselves around and contextualize your local activities um, when your community really is seeking to build community and establish a strategy. And we've seen other documents of that nature in the presentations of the other folks that have been up today. So I think that's, that's really important. Um, Recently, Carl um, founded the Open Repositories Working Group, so I, I really have to thank um, Martha Whitehead and Jeff Harder, um, like on, almost from the bottom of my heart for founding um, this organization. It's a mix of, um, it's a mix of leaders in this area in Canada and experienced practitioners. Um, and what we're doing is we're just now working together to really sink our teeth into solving um, initially four problems together. Um, and, it's, and it's just been really exciting. So I'll tell you a bit about our four domains right now. Um, so the Open Air Group um, is developing a plan for the adoption of open air guidelines by institutions. Um, just to, just to service our content in, in many different environments and to work more closely with our funders is a fantastic thing for us to be working on together. Um, community building and engagement, again, is about strengthening the repository community um, through relationship building and information sharing. We have a standards for data, usage data, which is developing recommendations for standardizing metrics across repositories and a next generation repositories group to promote the implementation of, of those functions in Canadian repositories. Um, this is... Um, this is, a, this is just a screenshot of a Slack channel. So just, I would like to address sort of the grassroots level. Um, so I mentioned earlier that, you know, we're this vast country and there's a lot of us that are working in this area, but most of us um, who are IR managers are the only people at our institutions that are working on this. Um, and it can be very um, exhausting and difficult to be in that state. And I think that actually happens all over the place. Um, and so uh, this community as well, um, has um, much more consciously and deliberately faced the issue of our critical need for a connection and information sharing. Um, and this isn't just about, you know, feeling good about talking to someone about, you know, the problem you're having that day. Um, one of the things that I observed at the 2016 meeting of repository managers was that, um, so I've been at this for 11 years and everybody else there, there had been turnover in their position or they were in a new position. So like somehow I was this grand old dame of <laughs> Canadian repositories at this meeting and it was very strange, but that sort of turnout, turnover, burnout, lack of connection is actually a sustainability problem for open access initiatives. Like if people have to keep learning the same lessons over and over again, or you know they just feel under-resourced and they continue to feel that way, um, it, it, it really, 
it makes it, first of all, hard for people in this space to advance in their careers and have more influence over decision making in their institutions. And it just limits their, their influence with, with faculty in terms of all the relationships that are broken when there's turnover in one of those positions. So I personally feel this is very, very important. And you know, this Slack channel, um, I guess we just love it because it's this, it, it's, it's open all the time. The people in the East have their conversations. It sort of moves across the country. Um, and it's a deeply supportive environment. And I think it helps to address that, uh, uh, that need for collaboration um, and, stra and strategy discussion, you know, talking about the open air uh, project and how that might play out at our institution and, and gathering questions together to bring back to the Carl OA working, OR working group. That's all I wanted to cover today, but I'd be happy to take any question at all. <laughs>